Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a mixing tip and trick tutorial video on ADSR. So in this video, we'll be checking out three common mistakes that you want to avoid when you are using EQ in the mix. So let's just dive right in. All right, the first mistake that is all too common, I know I fall prey to this quite a bit, is you see the EQ, you don't hear the EQ. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, you load up an EQ and you're like, I should do a high pass or a low pass and you dial it in real quick and you're like, okay, that looks right. Well, I do this sometimes and I'm like, wait a minute, stupid. Does it sound right? Like, it's great that it looks right. Like, that's a beautiful curve cutting everything below 95 hertz at 48 decibels per octave at a 0.67 Q factor slope. But does it sound <laughs> good, right? So I would say try this. Try to load up an EQ that you're comfortable with. This is the stock EQ in Logic. Um, I'm very comfortable with it. I've used it for years. So if I do like a high pass or a low pass, this is what I use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my Q factor. I'm going to set, so I want this to be a little bit more of an aggressive slope, 48 decibels per octave, right? And I'm going to dial this back right there, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close my eyes. And then as I play the source material, in this case, it's going to be an acoustic guitar, I'm going to just stop when it sounds like crap and dial it back until it sounds how I think it needs to sound. So I'm going to close my eyes, we're going to solo this guitar, and we're going to try this. All right, so I have my eyes closed the whole time. Now, this Logic EQ is a little bit weird with when you move, when you move the... Uh, High pass or low pass, it kind of messes up with the Q factor and uh, the shape of it. So it, I want a more aggressive cut here, but it should remain the same. So now I'm using my eyes for sure, but let's listen. Okay, so I had my eyes closed, right? And I'm not cutting out anything really below like 76 hertz. Now a lot of this guitar, because I'm puck, I'm, I was finger picking a bass note quite low on the neck, is at 100 hertz. So if I go above that. Right? It takes out a lot of the body of that guitar, which could work in the context of the mix, which is going to be our second point in this video. But the point remains the same, that if I go here, let me copy this, and I recall the default, and I just do this, it takes everything out from 200 down. I'm using my eyes, not my ears. My eyes are like, okay, it's taking everything out from, let's even take it to 100 down, right? It's taking everything out that's not in the bass frequencies, according to my eyes, so let's just call it good. But it really depends on the context of your mix. With that being said, let's hit our second point. All right, and the second common mistake that I know I've made before and I know a lot of the producers make with EQ is you EQ things in isolation, which we just did in the first step of this video, but that was to make a point. So this acoustic guitar, this kind of plays off the first point. You don't want to see your EQ, you want to hear your EQ, but you don't want to hear your EQ in isolation. You want to hear it in context of the mix. So I cut out low frequency from this guitar, not really knowing or realizing how that guitar plays with the other instruments in this section of this little track here. So I recorded these guitars, right? And I just quickly added some bass and some like atmospheric pad things. So there's a bass right here. Now this bass is going to share some frequencies with this acoustic guitar. Right? And there's a couple other tracks going on, so let's play the whole thing right now. Okay, so there's a little bit going on, and I just added some instruments just so this would hit home a little bit more at this point. But I cut that that the bass out of this without actually hearing what how the guitar works with the bass. So that being said, in isolation, I like how it sounds. Do I like how it sounds with the rest of the track? So let's, let's try this again. So I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hear my EQ, not see it, but I'm going to do it in context with the mix. So let me try to get this Q factor a little bit more how I want it. All right, let's give this a go. Okay, so I like it up there. So let's give it a little bit harder of a sense. So see, I went up to about 108 hertz now. Um, I'm going to dial that back just a, just a pinch and make that. 
because I do want part of that bass in there. So I kind of, I heard it and then I used my eyes to fine tune it. But see how I went to in the previous section of this video, if you guys check that out, if you didn't skip ahead, I went to about 75 hertz, I think. Well, now I'm going from 99 hertz down. So I cut out some more and I just wasted time if I actually was doing this in a mix where I was like, okay, I'm going to cut it and solo it. I'm going to cut out the lows, right? I'm going to do my high pass. Well, it's all about how it fits in context of the mix. Do not EQ things in isolation unless there's only one track in your song. Otherwise, you'll kind of run into this mistake where you'll be re redoing things multiple times. All right, so the third mistake that I think, uh, this one probably falls more into the category if you're a beginner or an intermediate, is using presets. It's, I like using presets with synths and workstations and samplers, but with things like EQ, it's really stupid, I think, because it doesn't take into account a lot of variables, right? And a lot of times, a lot of the, my favorite EQ, EQ, EQ curves, that's a tongue twister, that I've ever created on a track like an acoustic guitar, it's not by the book. And usually the presets are kind of by the book for like a male vocal, a female vocal, or a acoustic guitar. So let's copy this preset real quick, because this is how we cut out the acoustic guitar that I recorded taking into consideration the mic that I used, how close it was to the actual hole, the boominess of the, the acoustic guitar, the room I was in, the acoustic guitar itself, right? This is what we got using our ears and getting the cut and the high pass set to how we wanted it to be in context of the mix. So let's copy this and let's go check out one of the acoustic guitars. So we'll do acoustic guitar improve one. All right, so see how that does not cutting anything out. So this is adding frequency to my low, which in this instance can clash with my bass, right? So let's look at another acoustic guitar. We'll do, uh, let's try classic guitar improve. Again, adding some bass, right? Well, I have a real low bass right here. So any of those frequencies down here, from like 50, 80, maybe 70 under are just gonna clash with that bass. It's gonna be a little bit harder to mix everything together. So that's why I say presets aren't even necessarily a good starting point in a lot of EQ plugins. Um, there are some out there where they are like, like Isotope Neutrino, it's a whole different beast, but I would say go by your ears, not what you're seeing, okay? So let's go back to that uh, curve that we created. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna EQ the top, the mid end and the top end of the frequencies, right? So I had my eyes closed for most of that, right? Now, the reason I'm taking those frequencies out is I have this track right here, which is kind of acting like the lead. And I've cut out a lot of lows on this track and a lot of highs. So this is kind of just living in the mid range. So when I was using my ears and I was thinking to myself, I made the decision, I want this to be a little bit more forward in the mix than this. I cut out some of those frequencies. So if we compare these two EQs here, you'll see that I'm cutting out some frequencies between 500 and 100 and 1K. And you can see here, that's really all that exists for the most part in this. There's a little frequency below it and above it, but that's the bulk of what is remaining in that track. So those two are gonna sit together better. So that's why I said that presets aren't always a good starting point, especially on things like voice, guitar, piano, things that you actually record, even with synths. I mean, it may not take into consideration. Some synths are a little bit more bass heavy. Some synths have a little bit more high end, doesn't take into consideration how you set up your filters, what filter type you're using. So there's really no way of knowing, unfortunately. And it's not knocking the actual presets themselves. It's just the idea that a preset on an acoustic guitar EQ plugin or I'm sorry, the preset on an EQ that's meant for an acoustic guitar, it cannot know all the variables of how it needs to sit in the mix, what other instruments are in the mix, and how that guitar was recorded, what how you know what type of guitar it was even. So there you guys go. There are three common mistakes to avoid when you are using EQ. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time.